In the early 1940s, Abraham Maslow created his theory of needs. This identified the basic needs that human beings have. In order of their importance, psychological needs, safety needs, and the needs for belonging, self-esteem, and self-actualization. Later, David MacLean built on this work in his 1961 book, The Achieving Society. He identified three motivators that he believed we all have. A need for achievement, a need for affiliation, and a need for power. People will have different characteristics depending on their dominant motivator. According to MacLean, these motivators are learned. Which is why this theory is sometimes called the learned needs theory. MacLean says that regardless of our gender, culture or age, we all have three motivating drivers and one of these will be our dominant motivating driver. This dominant motivator is largely dependent on our culture and life experiences. The need for achievement would fall between needs for esteem and self-actualization. This need is satisfied not by the manifestations of success which confer status but with the process of carrying work to its successful completion. The need for achievement is a behavior directed towards completion with a standard of excellence. MacLean found that people with a high need for achievement perform better than those with a moderate or low need for achievement and noted regional national difference in achievement motivation. Through his research, MacLean identified the following three characteristics of high need achievers. High need achievers have a strong desire to assume personal responsibility for performing a task or finding a solution to a problem. High need achievers tend to set moderately difficult goals and task calculated risk. High need achievers have a strong desire for performance feedback. Individuals with a high need for achievement generally will take moderate risk, like situations in which they can take personal responsibility for finding solutions to problems and want concrete feedback on their performance. As MacLean points out, no matter how high a person's need to achieve may be, he cannot succeed if he has no opportunities. If the organization keeps him for taking initiative or does not reward him if he does good. Thus, if the management wishes to motivate individuals operating on the achievement level, it should assign them tasks that involve a moderate degree of risk of failure. Delegate to them enough authority to take initiative in completing their task and give them periodic, specific feedback on their performance. The need for power is concerned with making an impact on others, the desire to influence others and the way to change people, and the desire to make a difference in life. People who have a high need for power are characterized by a desire to influence and direct somebody else, a desire to exercise and control over others, a concern for maintaining leader-follower relations. The need for power is expressed as a desire to influence others. In relation to Maslow's hierarchy, power would fall somewhere between the needs for esteem and self-actualization. People with a need for power tend to exhibit behavior such as outspokenness, forcefulness, willing to engage in confrontation and a tendency to stand by their original position. They often are persuasive speakers and demand a great deal for others. Management often attracts people with a need for power because of the many opportunities it offers to exercise and increase power. Managers who are motivated by the need for power are not necessarily power hungry in the sense in which the expression is often used. The need for affiliation is defined as a desire to establish and maintain friendly and warm relation with other people. The need for affiliation in many ways is similar to Maslow's social needs. The people with high need for affiliation have these characteristics. They have a strong desire for acceptance and approval from others. They tend to conform to the wishes of those people whose friendship and 
companionship they value. They give value and feeling to the others. Above all, there are some limitations of achievement theory. The theory does not deal fully with the process of motivation and how it really takes place. Persons with high need for achievement expect similar results from others. As a result, they may lack human skill and patience for being effective managers. The use of protective techniques for developing achievement motive is objectionable. The research evidence in support of achievement motivation theory is fragmentary and doubtful. In conclusion, Maclean's definitive motive is similar to Maslow's theory. The person is concerned with forming friendly relation with others, desire for companionship and the desire to help others. Pupil dominated by inflictive need would be attracted to jobs that allow considerable social interaction, interpersonal relations. A manager could also facilitate their need satisfaction by spending more time with such individuals and periodically bringing them together as a group. The teacher can play an important role in the development of achievement motivation by taking some following steps. The teacher should emphasize the importance of achievement motivation in the life by means of narrating the exploits of great personalities and their achievements. Students may be motivated to follow the footsteps of great persons. The teacher's encouraging and friendly attitude and his enthusiasm in work will create the necessary environment for achievement motive in children. The teacher will guide the students in developing realistic achievement motives. Attempts should be made to convince the student that new motives will improve their self-image and is an improvement upon the prevailing ones. The teacher should develop habits of self-study among students. The teacher should encourage the student to evaluate their own achievement from time to time. The teacher should develop conducive social environment in the class so that every student should think that he is wanted and has a role to play. Now try this.